G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, I've started cleaning up some of this stuff, and uh, in the previous video you would have seen how I did a bit of work on this. This is the tar stock, and I just stripped it down into pieces, and then I wire buff the the rust off the the bits that are removable, the end of the ram and the uh, the handle and all that. Comes up good. I mean, that's what we really need to do for stuff like that, but. Uh, you would have seen in the video also I had a little sort of angly indicator thing, really lightly built, all rusted up, and uh, little G clamp and tweezers. Well, to clean them, you don't want to use a wire buff because you get easily damaged the stuff. And it's a little angly thing, looks angle find looks pretty interesting. So I'm using electrolysis to clean those, and I'll just show you what the setup is. Right, well here it is. I mean, there's a million videos on internet about doing this, but you basically just use a battery charger and you put your bits, can you see this? Oh, yep. You put your bits in a, in a bucket, of, in a little tub of water. Here's the bits on the rusting. And they just go in the tub. The, the negative, the negative of the battery charger goes onto that. And then you have a bit of crappy old steel on the other side, which is basically something with a lot of surface area. And a bit of old guttering is good, so just use that. Oh, a few sparks there. <laughs> and uh, you just put in your water, put in your, your gear. Don't let them touch you. You could fuse your battery charger. This is a, uh, what is it? It's a uh, four amp battery charger, but you can do this with just a power pack from an old printer or old, you know, any anything with a DC output, any anywhere from say, you know, 12 to 20 volts in that range. So, and it doesn't take much. It's showing um, half an amp if you look at the meter, and that's all it needs, uh, and that's all it will basically take. So, let's have a close look at what's going on in the tub. Okay, see it's fizzing away here. Now what normally happens is electricity goes from positive to negative. But when you do it this way, it actually flows the reverse. It flows from negative to positive. So all your rusty stuff that you're trying to get off will flow from the negative across the positive and it'll put itself on these metal plates. I mean, this is old hat, this stuff. But anyway, I'll just show you just in case you didn't know. It's plain water, quite safe, and you use washing soda all right you buy this from the laundry department in the supermarket it's what they use in washing machines to wash your clothes just washing soda all you do is stick the water in hook up your stuff like i've showed you and just add in the washing soda and mix it in until the amp meter on the battery charger shows something's happening comes up a bit and that's it let it go so i'll i'll leave this go overnight and we'll have a look at this more in the morning and see what's going on. But you can see all the craps coming from there and going across over there. This is good for light, small stuff, and also anything where the rust is pitted, pitted in deeply, where you can't get in with a wire buff because of the pits. This will help loosen it and move it and hopefully get it out of the pits, but otherwise it's going to be the pits. <laughs> all right, we'll have a look at this tomorrow and just see what it looks like. Well, here we are. It's the next morning and it's a bit nippy in the shed. You can still see that it's all gassing beautifully. Look at that and all that bubbles coming up. So it's uh, it's doing its business. Um, one of my viewers, the other Bill, he suggested that the little dangly indicator thing could be uh, something similar to a Star at 64 old style angle indicator. And I think he's probably right on the money there. I'm really interested to see what this is and uh, yeah look at those bubbles she's doing a good job so I'll take it out and just see what it looks like at this stage it's been going uh, I've wanted to put in eight hours and, um, been going about 18, 18 hours so it's only a small thing so it should have you know taken a bit of rust off you can see all the all the bubbly froth on the top the bubble bath so okay we'll take it out Actually, I'll point out at this stage, I use um, a big range of gloves when I'm working at times and uh, to pr protect my hands and also, you know, safety is relatively cheap. Uh, when I'm working on epoxy and non-petrochemical based 
stuff. I wear these cheap, really, really cheap dishwashing gloves. They're okay for that. You just if you get epoxy and fiberglass and stuff on your hands, which is really difficult to get off after. With these, it eliminates that, and you just chuck them in the bin. So when I handle this, I'll wear some rubber gloves, but I won't wear these. Um, they're really not tough enough for that sort of work where I'm going to be sort of scrubbing it. The other gloves I like to uh, wear, which are really good, are these. These are black uh, lightning nitrile gloves. And these are supposed to be some of the thicker ones you can buy. You can actually reuse these, so I'll wear a pair of these. These are chemical proof, uh, petroleum proof, acid proof. They're, they're really, really great. They're probably the best disposable gloves, the world's toughest disposable gloves. That's pretty right. They are really good. And uh, they're not that expensive. You get 100 gloves in a box, and I don't know, I think I paid 20 bucks a box or something. Can't remember. It's been so long. But um, anyway, I'll be wearing those. But they are good. Yeah, I recommend those. Okay, well I've got the little indicator out of the tub. I've, I've, the other stuff I've left in there do a bit more while I'm working on this. And I can see it's got a screw in the back, so we'll see if we can... Oh, yeah, it comes apart. So it's all good. Oh, she comes. So, that's a nut. Doesn't look very original to me. So it all comes to bits. Oh. Oh, what's that got? Hmm, I'll have to put the magnifying glass on this and see what I've got. Don't want to damage this. A little screw at the end here. Hmm. Interesting, I might put the light on it, get a bit more uh, light on the subject. That's where these tops off of the old Vegemite jars are handy. Keep your bits from going oh well. It's good to wear gloves on this because this black shit will get in your hands. I don't know, a tiny little screw there. Hmm, interesting. We've got a little spring here as well. What else have we got? Another, another screw here. This is where electrolysis is good at. Let's get into this stuff. Oh yes, there she goes. A little spring. Just remember how this all goes together. There we go. Tiny, tiny little screw. Pretty well made, this thing. What else is there? Scrubbing with the with the uh, toothbrush. I just use old to toothbrushes on this, and uh, yeah, I mean this may need a bit of treatment. Again, we we'll just see what we can get off with it. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll get set up to do some scrubbing. Hmm, interesting. If this uh, 
can come up on the first path, what I'll do is I'll then give it some more electrolysis. And uh, you can see it is shifting the stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think I see, I think I possibly see some information on here. Or do I? See the word starrett over here. Oh, I reckon that might be the word starrett. I just got a glimpse of it under the blackness. indeed the L.S. Starrett Company, Athol, Massachusetts. So it's a little old Starrett angle gadget. So, looks like the other bill was spot on, the money. So, no prize, but plenty of creds. Good on you, mate. Okay, I'm coming close on that. You can have a look. I'm just going to draw my hands off. No, oh, there you have it. Starrett indicator. How cool is that? Great. I mean, that's really good. Oh, I have to spend quite a bit of time cleaning this, so I'll just come back when I've got it all done and we can have a look at the finished product. But yeah, how good is that? I have Starrett. And uh, yeah, it's all there. Terrific. Oh, isn't that great? I love old stuff like this. It's uh, It's really good. So, uh, yeah, you just got to be careful, and this is where electrolysis really is the only way to go. And even then, it will take a while because this is obviously pretty ancient, and uh, you don't want to damage this stuff. Okay, we'll come back a bit later. Well, after another 18 hours of electrolysis, this is still pretty hard going cleaning this up. I mean, it was in pretty terrible condition. So, I've had to switch to the final solution, which is this stuff. Now this is the gear that you can um, buy in the hardware store to clean rust marks off of your cement and uh, it's industrial strength. It's uh, actually a type of acid. It's um, sulfamic acid. So it's um, less corrosive than hydrochloric or sulfuric. So which you could also use to clean up metal, but the trouble with those is they then tend to promote rust. This isn't quite so bad, but it, it's still dangerous. So once again, you wear your, your nitrile gloves and you can handle this stuff quite safely. So I've been scrubbing on this for quite a while and uh, we're getting there, it's coming up. You can see it's lifting it off and when you consider how nasty that thing was to begin with, yeah, this is gonna turn out okay, I think. So we'll, we'll keep pushing on. Look how that's coming up, that's doing a great job. And that was terrible to begin with. It was red with rust and then it was black with electrolysis oxide. And now this acid is doing the final job on it. This will come up, I hope, like brand new. Well, except for any pitting that may be in it, which is quite light then. So that's why you want to wear these gloves and watch your eyes, don't breathe in the fumes from this stuff. Had the fan going earlier, it was a bit breezy, so I turned it off. But pretty cold morning here. So it looks like it's going to come up all right. Right, well, I've got the bits all cleaned up. I mean, what a great job that did. Uh, they're now just soaking in some water to neutralize the acid, get rid of that. After that, I'll spray them with WD 40 more actually Caro and um, 
engine oil is what I use. So once I've done the two little screws and I've sprayed it and wiped it all down, I'll then put it back together. Well, it's all cleaned up. How good is this little gadget? It's a far cry to what it was when I got it. They're a bit of a primitive thing, really, the way they, you know, the, well, in those days I suppose that's all they had, but basically the way it works is you centre it with this little wheel here, as a spring goes off of that up to here, and that's how you actually centre the thing. Yeah, it's got little serrations on the edge of it, so you get your centre point. Looks like you use these in the horizontal position like this, and then it's just the probe just touches, in, you know, inside or outside, and depending on how you do it. It's quite sensitive, I mean, you know, it's hard doing it like this, but you can see how it's designed to work. So, you know, and then you just center it back, like that. Nifty, eh? <laughs> cool, isn't it? Really clever. So, you probably could use it, oh, I don't know, vertically you'd have to tighten that little screw up a bit, I think it's really meant to be used on the horizontal like this, and that way you can just put it inside or out and just read it, the uh, scale on it is, what is it, 0 to 15, but uh, yeah, well there you have it, cool, cool little machine, it's um, yeah, cleaned up as well as I can get it. I mean, there's some pitting on it from all that rust, but considering overall, yeah, it's a nice little gadget. Well, I did a bit more cleaning up using my little pencil uh, edi grinder and a wire brush. And I found that uh, also by tightening up this little centering wheel, the, uh, the indicator now comes back to zero on its own. So it works like a, a normal little test indicator should. So how cool is that, eh? <laughs> I start at 64, it's marked on it actually, down this end. But there you go, you don't see those every day and uh, well, as a collectible item it's worth doing up. I probably won't use it, it's a bit fiddly. But uh, it's certainly a nice little gadget, and yep, Dr. Rob brought it back from the brink of death. <laughs> okay, see you next time. Cheers.